Cooper, a name which sounds familiar but to some doesn't mean much at all. The name Cooper is literally an amalgamation of the words cup racing, the brand that helped Seat earn success in motorsport. Since 2018, Cooper have been a standalone brand and now they're building electric cars starting with the Cooper Born, an all-electric sporty city car. Of course it has to be sporty, it is a Cooper after all. Hey guys, hello and welcome to the Beat for Speed. This is the new Cooper Born eBoost and I'm going to be driving it. In fact, this is one of the very first UK drives of the Cooper Born eBoost. Uh, Cooper have been kind enough to invite me to this beautiful location. It's called the Wilderness Reserve here down in Suffolk and it looks incredible and so does the car. I mean, let's, let's go and have a look around it. So this car essentially is of course Cupra is used to be part of Seat and part of the Volkswagen group so essentially underneath it has the same underpinnings of the Volkswagen ID3 but of course it's got Spanish styling which looks incredible um, so if you start at the front over here you've got you know loads of bronze badging Cupra badging um, I've, I've opted for the car to drive the car that's in uh, the sort of metallic blue launch spec I like launch spec cars because of the contrast between the bronze and the blue but yeah there's plenty of bronze uh, badging all over the car and bronze features but you will notice a lot of triangle features in the car now this is uh, Cupra's new identity it's part of their brand and of course the triangle is the strongest structure in or strongest shape in structural mechanics so Cupra have incorporated that into the design of their vehicle if we come around to the side of the car you will see these alloy wheels so this Cupra is a V3 spec car so it's the highest spec vehicle uh, so it sits on 20 inch alloy wheels um, well 20 inch wheels and this is one of two designs that are in the 20 inch and then there's one design in the 19 inch wheel but it looks incredible I mean look at it it has this sort of uh, it is plastic but it has this sort of extra design on the side and of course Cupra center caps as well as we're moving towards the side of the vehicle uh, I mean you get certainly get a proportion a sense of proportion for the vehicle because the bonnet is quite short and the side of the vehicle you can see that the vehicle itself is actually quite long it's longer than the ID3 um, and it's also lower than the ID3 which is the same though so of course this car I mean just from looking at it it looks quite sporty um, and of course this is a, a city car but it's a, a sporty electric car is basically what we have here and it's rear wheel drive as well so that's a bonus I mean again you've got little features like this uh, you know in the bodywork that make it look that little bit more sporty as we move over to the back this is an important feature to notice so this was something that was seen in the um, El Grand concept, uh, not El Grand, sorry, El, El Bon concept in 2019 in the Geneva Motor Show. And Cooper have opted to stick with that. And it sort of, it keeps the, the, the roof separate from the, from the side of the bodywork. And it makes it look like it has the sort of floating roof effect, which not everybody likes, but I think it's cool. Um, also, when we talk about the El Bon concept, this car is one car that is uh, so similar to the concept car in fact I think it looks better than the concept car um, and that's not usually the case when it comes to concept cars and what we have here is this rear spoiler um, it's quite a large rear spoiler actually um, I mean I can stick all of my hand under there um, but again it's got that sporty feel as we move over to the back of the car again you can see Cooper badging in bronze looks really cool really uh, it has that contrast contrasting effect and looks premium um, you've got this sort of floating light bar and rear diffuser again to add to that sporty feel I mean overall it is an incredible looking car and what do you expect it's it's Sia and Cupra's you know Spanish styling um, onto a Volkswagen essentially a Volkswagen group car which are very good anyway um, so I'm gonna go drive it um, but before I do we'll take a look at the inside and see what that's like Right, so inside the Cupra, it's pretty much the same story. I mean, first things first, this car has keyless entry, keyless start, and in fact, you don't even have to press the stop start button. You can simply get in, and as long as you've got your keys with you, you can just put the car into drive mode and, and, and off you go. Um, so inside the car, 
Um, I'm gonna start with the seats. So these seats, they feel like they're Alcantara leather, but they're actually made of a polyester material that sort of recycled from all fabrics. Um, and so that, that, that sort of points towards the sustainability of the brand and what they're trying to do here, of course. Cupra are moving into all electric cars, starting with the Bon E-Boost. And looking around the car as well, you get a sort of uh, suede and sort of, you know, Alcantara kind of uh feeling um but of course you've got these also these sort of bronze bits in the car as well which again keep with the styling theme on the outside of the car and the budging of the car to start with you get this multifunctional steering wheel which is heated as well and you get this uh i think it's a five inch um sort of dash screen it is it is quite small but i do quite like it simply because you can see the entire uh, instrument cluster or, or display through your steering wheel there's, there's nothing blocking your view as to what you're looking at you can see your speed you can see all your information the central infotainment system this is a 12 inch screen which is compared to the Volkswagen ID3 that has a 10 inch screen so this has a larger screen as well and it's pretty cool to use you know the touch screen is pretty great what I don't like about this car is the climate control settings. You have these sort of uh, almost like touch sensitive buttons that you have to sort of, I don't know if you have to press them or you have to slide them to change the climate control settings. They're just a load of faff. But apart from that, the touch screen uh, responsiveness for the heads up, uh, for the infotainment system is pretty great. You get cup holders, you get wireless charging for your phone. You also get some USB uh, ports as well. And you get pretty large door bins. Um, overall, it's pretty pretty cool looking car inside. Designed very well with that sporty appeal as well. The, the glove box is not that large, to be honest. Um, but you've got storage elsewhere. You've got door bins, you've got cup holders, you've got glove box in the middle as well. So you've got plenty of storage. And of course, the boot in this car, uh, it's a 385 litre boot, which is rather large. It's pretty cool. You can also put the seats down, although you, there is a bit of a ledge when you do put the seats down. So if you do load all the way through to the seats, you will have some issues uh, with stuff falling back and uh, you know falling down and not, not staying exactly where you want it to stay. But aside from that, sitting in the driver's seat, it does feel very sporty. You get these aluminium foot pedals. You've got, you've got some sort of leather trim on the outside of the floor mats. And this is it. This is, this is you know, city life. This is what, what Cooper have designed. Um, I haven't mentioned the A-pillar. So the A-pillar sort of splits into two, which I thought would be a bit of an issue. I thought it would... Um, so in order to solve the problem of having a blind spot in your air pillar, what Cooper have done is created two air pillars. So they've created two blind spots. But actually driving this on the road, as I have been doing today, um, it, is, it has been quite useful because you can genuinely see through uh, this sort of uh, extra window here. And it does improve visibility. And of course, visibility all around the car is pretty great. Looking out the back as well um, through the um, sort of rear tinted windows as well which you get in the v2 models and in the v3 models so the top spec models like this talking about the top spec models you also get a massaging seat function in this well you get heated seats and a massaging seat function which is great i mean the amount of tech that you get in this car for such a price is pretty cool uh, this car starts at around forty two thousand pounds uh, that's because I've got the 77 kilowatt hour battery, which produces around 228 brake horsepower um, when you when you engage over boost. Um, but I mean, it's it's all the power you ever need. You get that inst instant responsiveness, and you know it's it, it looks like it's going to be great around the city, and it looks incredible as a design. So I, I mean, I just hope it lives up to how it looks in the way that it drives but i'm gonna take this out to drive now and of course if you are enjoying this video if you are thinking about going to buy a cupra born e-boost or if you just like the content make sure you subscribe to the channel um, make sure you leave a comment tell me what you think about the car what questions you have about the car um, i'll try to answer all the questions that you have as accurately as accurately as i can but of course let's get a conversation going and uh, let's see how this, this car is, dry, uh, is to drive. Let's, let's take it out now. Right, here we go. In the new Cupra Born E-Boost. 
and to begin with we're going to take the car on um, a sort of off-road not off-road exactly it's just sort of some bumps just to see what the ride is like that's what I'm most interested to to see so we're gonna take it into this sort of uh, I mean we're part we're here in the wilderness reserve anyway so let's go see what it's like on a, on a variety of roads this is a city car but I mean if, if it's going to be an everyday car it should be able to soak up the punishment of everyday bumps and of course with it being a more of a sporty feel I have heard from people that it is a little bit on the firm side so that's what I want to find out so I mean so far it seems okay great driving position nice and comfortable I can already start to feel exactly why people would say that it, it is it is a little bit on the firm side but not, uh, but I'm, I'm not even on the more bumpy bits yet so we're gonna go there so let me tell you a little bit more about this car so the Cupra Bon originally was named after the city in Barcelona or the region in Catalonia uh, Spain so it is, although it is a bit of a strange name you would imagine Bon but that's where the name was born essentially in Spain okay here we go this is the more bumpier bits so whilst I navigate the bumps on this bit of road a road rather on this bit of field I'll tell you a little bit more a little bit more about the car so this car has an electric motor powering the rear wheels with 228 brake horsepower and plenty of torque and you know it's gives you over 300 miles of range with the 77 kilowatt hour battery 0 to 60 comes in around seven seconds with the 77 kilowatt hour battery there is a 58 kilowatt hour battery version of this car which gives you slightly less range uh, but of course it goes 0 to 60 a lot quicker it goes in about 6.6 .6 seconds so you get roughly around half half a second or just under half a second quicker in 0 to 62 miles an hour i beg your pardon not not to 60 so in 0 to 62 miles per hour this car can do that in seven seconds and of course because i'm on this field and you can see in front of me the grass is quite um, high around the the sides of the car every now and then the parking sensor might go off just to let me know that there is something nearby but it's, all, it's good to have the comfort of the parking sensor there and of course you can turn it off oh there's those some of those bumps which i'm really feeling now in, in my spine but these are quite big bumps to be honest um it's not very good representation of the car we'll take it out onto the country roads in a second one thing that i have found whilst driving this car earlier today as well is when you hold the steering wheel okay there's those parking sensors telling me this this stuff around when you hold the steering wheel as you're driving along because the multifunction steering wheel is sort of touch sensitive with uh, settings for the volume control and the audio you do accidentally tend to tend to push those those buttons and, and you can see that the the infotainment system does start to to do random things as if it's possessed but it's a great place to sit and see out onto the road you can see all the infotainment system and your heads-up display and of course this has got a um, heads-up display it's got augmented heads-up display as well so it, it it can draw out the lines of the road in front of you and, and tell you exactly which way you need to go right so that's the end of the off-road portion of this test which is rather unconventional because of course this is a city car it's an electric car it's got a low center of gravity it's got a more sporty feel but i just took it slightly off-road but i needed to do that to get to where i need to be which is on the main road where i would like to test some more features of the car the first of which is those brakes i have heard about these brakes and they are not the best to use because they're very progressive uh, as you as you touch the brakes it feels like not enough is happening as you, you know you really have to keep your you really have to put your foot all the way down for there to be a considerable amount of braking so if you do encounter for example on a road like this if you do encounter a car coming in the, in the other direction you will have to sometimes you press the brake slightly and you don't slow down enough you have to press it more but of course it is progressive so there is that sensitivity in there in case you just need to slightly touch on the brake and slow yourself down 
The steering wheel is progressive as well. The steering wheel is the part of this car that has blown me away. It is so direct, so crisp and clean in the way that it turns. It it makes this car so enjoyable to drive. It almost reminds me of the Alpine that I drove recently because it feels so light in the way that it drives. It just skips over the bumps and of course, you know, because it's got that sporty feel as well, it can handle them. As we go along this road, let's let's see what sort of performance it has. We've got we've got another journalist behind who's also testing the Cupra Born, and so let's see what they have to think about it. Oh, there we go over the bumps. I mean, the the ride with the adaptive suspension may be on the firmer side, but the seats soak it up pretty well because these seats are very comfortable. You know, they look so much like Alcantara leather, but they are sustainable because they come from this material that has been recycled. They are really, really great. So with the adaptive uh, suspension, you can change the drive modes. There's four different drive modes, including individual and a sport mode and a comfort mode and, and all sorts. But uh, I feel like this car is great for city driving of course this is this is where the world is going towards now it's going towards electric cars and the benefits of owning an electric car in today's day and age is incredible and of course the infrastructure for for charging is getting better as, as well so this car can charge from 5% to 80% using a DC fast charger in around 30, just over half an hour in around 35 minutes that's what Cupra say of course, if you are charging it in a home socket, because this is a 77 kilowatt hour battery, you can expect to see around 12 hours. With the 58 kilowatt hour battery, it's roughly around nine hours. But uh, I mean, just if you have the car on charge overnight, you can get to where you need to go in the morning. And it's just, it literally is as easy as get in and go. Simply because you don't have to unlock the car, you don't have to put the key in anywhere, you don't even have to press the start button. You simply get in and go. And when you leave the car, I found this quite confusing at times. When you leave the car as well, you simply just leave the car. You don't need to fiddle around with any buttons. Of course, you do need to put the car in park, which brings me on to the gear selector um, function, uh, if you will is right behind the steering wheel. Now, as I'm driving now where my seating position is, I cannot see that. And occasionally your hand will touch it because obviously you've got the uh, indicator stock on this side and you've got the lights, uh, windscreen wiper stock on this side. The windscreen wipers, of course, are automatic as well. We're just coming into a little, uh, a little town or a little hamlet. Um, so we're gonna slow it right down and uh, we're gonna see what it's like here in Suffolk, around the Wilderness Reserve. It does look pretty cool. Uh, all the houses are red. Some of the buildings are really nice. Where would you like to go? What's going on here? Sorry. Is this a BMW situation again? Please start route guidance first. Why do you cars like having arguments with me? I've told BMW, I put it in its place, although the BMW might have won that one. And now the Cupra, yeah, you better be quiet. Anyway, as I was saying, the drive select mode is behind the steering wheel and you can't really see it too well, but your hand does hit it when, you, um, uh, when you're going maybe for the indicator, uh, sorry, the windscreen wiper stock. The windscreen wipers are of course automatic as well. So you can set that to automatic, which makes things slightly easier. But then of course, you've got the uh, headlights, um, you know, how you, how you control the headlights from another area behind the, oh, I've just turned them on. What have I done there? Turn them on to auto. From behind the gear selector stock. So, Everything is behind one another. I mean, it does look, from a styling perspective, it looks packaged perfectly. It looks incredible. And of course, if I was, if you were to ask me, if you were to have this car or the Volkswagen ID3, it'd be this car all day long, simply because it just looks so much better. And okay, it costs slightly more. And, but I mean, it just looks so cool. It looks so sporty. And then it has the performance to match as well. And it's rear wheel drive. A rear wheel drive, sporty, electric car for the city. The only downside that I can see to this car is those brakes. That's, that's the only downside. 
But of course you do get used to them and once you get used to them, it does get quite fun to use the, the, the brakes as well. You know exactly how much brakes to put in. The steering is just pinpoint accurate and the car goes around bends flat because of course it's got batteries that are stored in the middle all the way low down in the car so it's got a really low center of gravity so it, could, it, it i mean this is again the benefits of electric cars i'm i'm not one of those that is pushing for electric cars to come sooner but i'm also not one of those that's you know oh i really like the sound of a internal combustion engine car and i don't like electric cars at all and you know it's you know i i'm i'm excited to see the benefits of both internal combustion engine cars, hybrid cars and electric cars. And so far what I'm seeing with electric cars is positive. Of course, I've not lived with one for long term, so I don't understand uh, entirely the, you know, the charging infrastructure or what it's like in terms of range anxiety. But from the purely from a performance perspective, the electric cars are incredible. And I've got myself lost now because I've gone so far away from where I was so I'm gonna turn around now and I'm gonna start heading backwards and uh, of course I can go through that little town and of course these uh, city roads again and get a feel for the car a bit more so I'll just find somewhere to turn around from possibly here now we can get a real feel for you know, the sort of everyday things like doing a three-point turn um, or, you know, coming up to junctions. What's the visibility like? Uh, I'm going to go a bit further, right? And this street looks nice and narrow, but I'm going to try a three-point turn here because I've heard that this car has a very good turning circle. So let's see how many tries it takes for me to do the full three-point turn. So we're going to go... One, and then we're going to reverse. Two, that's the uh, pavement on the back. Three. It's gone so quiet in here, you know, because it's electric. I can hear Phil Collins on the radio. Four. Five. We're out in five. And in case anybody was wondering, that was Phil Collins, Feel It In The Air Tonight, was on the radio. Incredible song. Anyway, we'll head back now towards the Wilderness Reserve on these incredible roads. And let's see what this car has to give. Let's change the drive select mode, actually. Let's change it to a performance. Oh, and now the car does, it sound, you, can, you can hear a bit more sound to it now, that electric sound. It does feel a bit more ferocious. Initial thoughts, I can't see any difference in comfort. So it's not gone any more uncomfortable than it was before. Steering wheel I somehow feels better. And grip, it's got grip, it's staying flat, it's handling the bumps pretty well pretty well yeah I, I would love one of these cars for city driving and everywhere driving everyday driving rather I prefer big sporty performance cars of, of course my channel is maybe for speed I prefer the big sporty performance cars but if this is the future of hatchbacks I'm all for it you know and I'm not just saying that. I mean, sometimes you get into a car and because that is the car that you're currently in, that's the car that's currently in front of you, that's the one that looks like you would prefer. For example, between the Porsche Taycan and the uh, Audi e-tron GT, when I sit in the Audi e-tron GT and I see that and it looks so good, I think I really want an e-tron GT. But then when I sit in the Porsche Taycan, I think the same thing with the Porsche Taycan. Oh, this is gonna get a bit tight here. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, I think the same thing with the Porsche Taycan. I think it looks so incredible. Same with the BMW M3 and the Giulio Quadrifoglio. I, whenever one of them is in front of me, I prefer it over the other. But with this, it's not just because this car is in front of me. I think this is really getting me sold on hatchbacks. If you can make hatchbacks, more hatchbacks with rear wheel drive like this, 
then I'm I'm excited for the future. Right, I'm gonna get ready to go again. Oh, it's 30 mile an hour road here, so it's going to slow it down. Please wait. Wait for what? What? Okay, let's put it down back into Pro Comfort. Can we go down to Comfort mode? Comfort. Okay. Right now, it feels so calm. Just enjoyable to just cruise around this little area here. It must be so cool to live here. Yeah. Right, as we come out of this little hamlet back onto National Speed Limit Road, Let's take the car back up to speed. On the radio is Rocket Man by Elton John. So that's a, that's kind of how this car feels because you you don't get a sense of how fast you're going, how fast you're accelerating rather, until you look down at the speedo or the heads of display and you see that, okay, now I am approaching, you know, some, a, a speed that's probably I need to take my foot off the, off the accelerator. And I think that's purely from the electric feel of the car. You don't get the sensation of an engine noise. You don't get the vibrations that you normally would. You can be, actually from a driving perspective, you are one with the road. You can feel everything in the road. And there's no interference from an engine vibrating. Of course, you can hear some wind noises, but you learn to block those out. So when it's just you and the car and the road, yeah, you could feel everything. Uh, there's a tractor. Tractor's going to wait for me. Lovely. Everybody's so nice here. So yeah, it's been a... Just to sum it up, this car is an all-round all round great package. I seriously think if you are thinking about buying it, you should, you know, if you are considering buying it, go ahead and buy one. It looks incredible. And I'm sure you will get some thumbs up from pedestrians. So just to sum it up, this car does look incredible. It drives incredibly as well. And if you are thinking of buying one, I think you should go ahead and, you know, bite the bullet and go ahead and do it. Um, and if you're not thinking about buying one, uh, but you are thinking about getting an electric car, consider this as an option as well, because it really is that good. If at the very least, go and test drive one when you get an opportunity, because this car is coming to the UK. And of course, other Cupra cars will be coming as well. Recently in Barcelona, Cupra have just unveiled some of their other car, including the Terma, and the Urban Rebel concept, which will have a new name soon. Um, but of course, for now, it's it's called the Urban Rebel concept and it looks pretty cool as well. So the future of Cupra is pretty cool. And if you are thinking of getting a Cupra vehicle, go ahead and buy one. Um, you know, it's all around a cool, cool package. I do want to thank Cupra for inviting me out to Suffolk to this incredible location and allowing me to have one of the first UK drives of the Cupra born e-boost and it's just i'm blown away i'm blown away i don't i don't think i've had an experience like this in an electric car since i've been driving electric cars and i've driven a fair few including i mean the, the first electric car i drove was a porsche taycan and i did feel the sort of sensation with the porsche taycan but since then it, it has sort of started to become a bit more common uh, a bit more expected that this is how it's going to feel but with this car, it's um, it has blown me away, and the amount of uh, you know the amount of gadgets that you get with it, the amount of features that you get with it, um, yeah, you're ne you're never gonna get bored. This is all the car you ever need. 
that was the Cooper Bond e-boost. Make sure you subscribe and like this video and comment on this video and watch some of my other videos. There's more to come very soon. Thank you. The Cooper Bond is as stylish on the inside as it is on the outside. It's also comfortable, practical, economical, sustainable, and despite all this, it can even claim to be sporty. Cupra may be a world away from what they used to be with Seat, but now they have the opportunity to be a great brand in their own right. And they have created a car that is not only refined, but one that remains composed too. Not bad for only their first fully electric car.